And moving on into the draft, LGD leading off with a couple of strong support picks in the Skywrath Mage and the Vengeful Spirit. We're going to see DK land themselves a first pick, Faceless Void, following it up with the Ogre Magi and the Marana. So with uh, the tandems, we already see a nice setup stun for the Sacred Arrow um, between the Ogre Magi and the Marana. And of course, Skywrath and Venge, unbelievably strong in terms of early roaming. Looks like we're in for an action-packed early game. Team DK's turn to pick. And Trout is muted. I'm willing to bet. Test, right, test, 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 there test, is test, the man. test. I <laughs> unmuted myself. God, I'm, I swear to God, I'm going to fix this. I unmuted myself <laughs> in game because I screwed up my Dota TV, so I messed with that. But oh, okay. anyway, I was going to say, I, I agree with you. The arrow setup with Ogre Magi, not to mention the arrow setup with the, the Faceless Void ulti. The oh, Chronosphere is very easy to hit as well. Um, and then, yeah, with LGD drafting, this is what I talked about them drafting around their, their strengths. And one of their biggest strengths, I think, is faith on that vengeful spirit, just in general, but specifically against heroes that have big ultimates, like the Void Ultimate, like, um, well, there's a big one that fades me, but just, uh, oh, like the Bat Lasso, things like that. Right. And there's no difference here. It's going to be very effective against the Faceless Void Chronosphere. Really do like the pick of the Doom by LGD, though. Can certainly take a Void out of the equation so long as you have the initiation advantage. They are going to go ahead and give you uh, what I can only describe as a very popular pub combo. The Witch Doctor and the Faceless Void. So fun to hit a two or three man um, uh, Chronosphere and then follow it up with the Witch Doctor ulti. So certainly going to be some big play potential there. And I really like the pairing of the Ogre Magi with the Faceless Void as well. Void, one of those uh, heroes that doesn't need a whole hell of a lot to get going in the early and mid game. You often see him run in the off lane for that exact reason, just because he's going to be effective and have plenty of chances to come back on the back of kills if he happens to fall behind in terms of golden experience. And now he's going to have the buff from Bloodlust. He's going to have that stun coming out of the uh, Sacred Arrow from Marana, as you had mentioned, and now a lot of help out damage from the Witch Doctor ulti. So looks like DK uh, came into this with a very well put together overall premeditated plan. Yeah, one of the most annoying things too against Faceless Void is you don't really want to go BKB. It Sometimes it's essential, um, but it doesn't really stop the problem that you can just stack up some damage from Faceless Void, Chronosphere, and then BKB doesn't really do anything. Also doesn't do too much against Witch Doctor and you, um, uh, in conjunction with that. So that's one thing you have to be careful is not get into this. I, I think the best way to draft around a void is to not get tunnel visioned into like a one core line and have multiple heroes that you're going to have to take care of if you're Five void. So that it's not just all I have to do is get this hero and then we win a fight. It's like they have doom right now. Now they just pick up Weaver. Something that's um, along those same lines, I think for a fifth pick would be good for LGD. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And I, you know, I hate to say it. We might see something that you have shown disdain for a number of times. With the troll. But there is, yeah, yeah, they, <laughs> he, yeah. They may end up running the Weaver in the aggressive tri lane. Um, Skywrath Mage and Venge work very, very well in that regard. Weaver, of course, would make it three ranged heroes as well, so they could stay back and stay nice and safe. Very punishing, um, even with just a couple of levels from the Skywrath and from the Venge. So that option remains to them. That would give them a solo safe lane Doom, get him off to a nice start, get him to a very quick six, and he's going to have not many problems farming in the face of most heroes. And then they could pick whatever mid they wanted to go with now. So something to watch out for. Don't know if that's going to be the case. On the side of DK, though, we don't know if that Marana is actually going to be... Uh, well, we don't know where she's going to go, I should say. They actually have a very nice option to run aggressive if they want to as well um, with the faceless void getting a little bit of priority so both teams very flexible in how they want to lane this out yeah actually the the last point that you made i think makes a lot of sense if 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 they do anticipate lgd just doing standard lanes with a weaver tri lane the only mm -hmm. thing is is and i've talked at great length how i just don't think weaver tri lane is good and that's been shown through like the last three times i think we've seen it it's just failed miserably Agreed. um but Weaver Tri Lane in their safe lane is a, is a bit of a different story. You have, um, it's called the safe lane for a reason. You have your the advantages of the terrain on your side, and uh, you have the poles to work with. So if they do try to be aggressive with a Marana Ogre Witch or something like that, and then put Void up against Doom, Void against Doom is great for Void. Um, I don't know if it's that great, just because it is the safe lane. You're running aggressive. There's always the potential if you do fail, you're kind of screwed unless your your solos are really owning. That's there's two things when you go aggressive trial that you need to seconds, check right? off in order to make it successful. One, can we actually push the tower? Five like seconds, that that's right? I think the biggest thing that teams fall short on is they is they like maybe get a couple of kills, they trade off one for one, but then they just leave because they can't push the tower. Oh, um, and the second one is is our 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 are our solos going to win very handedly? And I think if you meet both of those two criteria, then aggressive tri-lanes are more than okay. 
Now, speaking of solos that tend to win pretty handily, how about a Viper pickup to round out the five from DK? Leaves them with a lot of options. Marana, Viper, Void, the three that you would expect to be winding up um, in the three respective lanes. It's just a matter of where they want to put the Ogre and the Witch Doctor. The roam potential going to be pretty large on both sides, though. Still, if LGD can stay stabilized and get the Skywrath and the Vengeful Spirit active early without sacrificing a whole lot of lane presence wherever they initially start the game, I, I like their lineup a little bit more throughout the early stages of the game and on into the mid-game, especially once Doom gets up and running and his ability to jump onto a Void if he has an early Blink Dagger or something along those lines and just take him out of the fight for a little while with him gone, like, basically everything that I see from DK right now just works really well with a Void. If they take him out of it or they're able to delay the Chronosphere for the duration of a Doom, it's going to be very difficult for these four heroes, as good as they are at what they do, to stand up to the damage output I think LGD can put out with just the four we see now. Yeah, and I like that more teams are experimenting with Core Marana. We saw it so much, like, leading up to TI4 and even in TI4. Right. Um, it was picked up, by, I, I want to say it was like the flavor of the, like, three months or something. Um, actually, when I, I remember watching the NA qualifiers for TI4, it was like Marana and Tree picked up every single game, and Marana was always right. a core. Um, and I, I think that she still can function quite well as a core. I think people think that she falls off, and she does, like, from the, around the mid-game, like mid to late, I would say, she does fall off. But if you can get past that hump where you actually get, where you continue your farm and keep going, keep going, she's actually one of the best carries in the game. I'm not even kidding. Her, her damage output and just the fail safe that she has with her leap is mm -hmm. really, really good in the late stages of the game. So, And then it's actually going to be a Puck for the last one. So, eh, I'm not sold. I, I, I think Puck is really good. Um, I'm just worried that when I look at this lineup, if, if Void goes in and just chronos the Weaver, I, I'm wondering how much punching power they have if the Doom gets shut down. So that's my only Ten worry here for LGD. Training. No, I agree with you. The Puck it adds even more team fight, even more AoE to them. It gives them more options in terms of how they can contain this team and ways to shut down the Void in particular, just being able to jump onto him. But they are going to be lacking in damage, as you said, if um, if they end up losing the Weaver, the Weaver's under-farmed for whatever reason. So the early game going to be of paramount importance to both sides, no doubt about it. We see a couple of early smokes that were picked up. I saw one picked up on, yep, the Skywrath Mage. And I'm pretty sure I saw one, yeah, one picked up on the Witch Doctor too. So this is kind of going along the lines of what we thought we might see so far as early roaming and early aggression. Looks like DK is going to roam out, speaking of aggression, as five making their way towards the dire jungle. Siler actually used the Sukuchi right away. He used it once already just to get up here and scout as fast as possible. So they're not smoked, but they will scout them out, which is not a big deal for DK because they're not smoked. So they didn't have to invest in that. And Siler, have to be a little bit careful. That was really close. <laughs> If he got stunned into an arrow, he was definitely dead. Do they have sentries? They did. So that was very, very close. Flirting with death a bit there, but at the very least, he does get some useful information um, that they're in their jungle. If they're up there this late, this pretty much says that they are going to go aggressive tri lane. Mm -hmm. I would, I would imagine. I'm trying, trying to see. Maybe not. Okay, nope. I could be wrong. I think it is going to be a faceless void. I think it's because he has eight tangos, but we'll see. Looks like they are going to go ahead and drop their wards and then move on. Uh, to their next few places. Um, they are leaving three at top, though. So the aggro try does seem to be the word, and it looks like it's going to be the same potentially. I don't know. LGD is still kind of roaming their supports to and from, and we'll see where they're going to wind up. In July is, is down at bottom. It's going to be a try on try, at least by the way things look. And I actually kind of like this for LGD a little bit more than I like it for DK. Weaver, um, whenever he goes aggro, he's a lot easier to shut down. But as you said, safe lane, safe lane for a reason. And as much punching power as they're going to have so far as comboing off of the fire blast and then the arrow and so on, I worry that there's just an, so many ways for LGD to punish them if, if their execution isn't perfect. The only thing I worry or I'm scared for LGD is that Faith bought boots, which is eh, it's okay, it doesn't make him very tanky. And then Skywrath bought everything. Like his, his consumables are low and he has very little stats. And obviously, I've talked about, and about this at great length. Weaver is deceptively elusive. He's not very tanky at all in, late, in the laning phase. Already playing very scary because he knows that he can't even go in for Sakuchi's for last hits. Putting some pressure in here, but nice, um, nice counter damage there coming out from MMY. Yeah, he's going to be able to spam down at least one of these heroes, and we'll see how that's going to play out with. Witch Doctor's heal being able to keep them in lane, but this is bound to be very active. Still want to give a little bit of attention to the other lanes. Talking about mid, we're going to have Yao going head-to-head -head with CTY, who is actually running him right on back up the cliff. And we can see he's actually... Yao's taking a lot of damage here. He's not going to die, but he came 
a little disturbingly close. Still, he's winning the CS battle, at least for the moment, and down at bottom is that Void versus Doom matchup we talked about. Oh, if he connects actually on a Corrosive phone. Oh. If he uh, actually got that attack, sorry, I didn't say corrosive, but poison attack, he would have <laughs> killed him. But um, yeah, Void versus Doom, it's relatively even. I, I think Doom does fine. I think Void does fine. Unless Void gets a lot of very lucky procs in this bash, um, I think Doom will Dyer's be okay in this top. bottom lane. So that's that's the only thing I think is scary. Like Viper versus Puck, yeah, Viper wins, but I, we'll have to see if he can really outplay him. I don't think he can do enough to actually shut him down. If he gets a kill, it'll be a totally different story. But the bottom lane, I don't think this Void's going to be able to really shut down Doom, and that's the one thing I'm scared of. Haste Root at the two-minute mark, picked up by Yell, and the bounty taken by Faith. So everyone should make it back to lane safely. A lot of kill potential everywhere, especially, again, when the supports get to roaming. But talking about this top lane, uh, we can see the Marana is at 9 CS right now, so nearly doubling that of the Weavers. So even Sans kills, I feel like this is going pretty well for DK. Yep, it is. Viper, in the meantime, like, he had a very good start early on. Yao is not very close to his bottle. It's about 300 gold away. The only lane that's really doing okay is the Doom, and uh, that's to be expected, I think. So I have to see Arrow actually gets shot on Sylar. Yep, does good. catch him. And they've got the fire on the follow up with the fire blast. Shikuchi, though. Oh, it got him! Just at the outside range of that sentry they had dropped right as they came into lane. First blood drawn by XBG, and that's all they needed. I mean, the one kill, given they were already winning the CS war, and they're going to be quite happy about this. They had also roamed uh, Faith elsewhere. They had roamed him towards mid, so he wasn't there to try to help out. And now with him spending a little bit more time away, he will get the counter ward on right here, though. But uh, with him spending more time away, he's going to start to fall behind in levels as well. So DK has to be really ha happy with this top lane at the moment. Well, it also took him very long to get the counter ward. So even though he just got it, he's going to have to wait a full minute until four minutes and 15 seconds to pull that. So it's not going to be too effective in getting some extra last hits. And and even then, oh, they actually placed another one. And is it outside of the... Yeah, it's just barely outside of the range oh. of the century. That's so but, brutal. And there's actually a smoke coming out. But even if they did stay here and start pulling, I don't think that they can safely do it because this, this try lane. Oh, Sylar, yep. he's in trouble. He's at the outside of it, though. We did see a smoke, by the way, by Faith and MMY. They ducked into the woods. They wanted to take a longer path. Now they're going to come back around. Cold Snap's going to be the target. They hit him with everything they've got. He's down to about one-eighth of his health. Make it a return kill. And now Dreamy, you isolated a bit. Has a leap if he wants it, and we'll go ahead and expend it. So a return kill for LGD. Their camp is going to remain blocked, as you had mentioned, but at least they get something working for themselves. The runes are back up at four minutes. Bounty rune at bottom. Going to be a double damage here at top, and it looks like it's going to be Faith that gets to it first. A possible arrow attempt here actually onto MMY, but that's a very fast... Oh, it does hit him still. Oh, got him. I didn't think that's it was going so to. Yeah, it looked like it was going to miss his hitbox. That's from just about max duration, so easy kill, Siler. Okay. Okay, yeah, like that looked, that that was a little, I won't say suspect, but it did look like he was well clear of that. Like he had moved quite a bit uh, yeah. before it got anywhere near his hitbox. I counted it out if you're listening. I was like, eh, he'll sidestep that because he's, wait, what? Yep, exactly. Oh, pretty crazy. I thought he was fine, but he's not. And more dominance asserted now because of that. Every little kill helps. So he's actually in, maybe in trouble. Nope, he just barely gets out of the range of uh, XBG stun. Potential gank attempt here in mid. It's a little early, unfortunately, for the coil. Just five and a half on the puck. Faith will be spotted. He's got a DD. Has one stun. He may go ahead and spin it and will. Yell, though. Yep, they're going to come on up. They even brought the Skywrath Mage. Faith is taking a lot of tower damage here. He's going to end up dead. And now there's going to be the Chronosphere. However, it's too late to save the Viper. Yeah. MMY is going to be a return kill for Black Z. And now Yal's in trouble. He has coil now. Hits six off of those kills. Has his bottle. We'll go ahead and toss the orb and be able to jaunt across the river. Ends up being four for two with the rotation from the Void. If he had gotten there just a little earlier, if he'd have been able to save the Viper, it would have been a huge win. As it is, at least they break even. Yeah, really nice play from CTY by still getting the ult off. He got his ult off on the puck and then changed his focus to one hit the uh, the, um, the Vengeful Spirit right after that. It was really nicely played. Baiting them all in, getting a nice exchange for his team. So they're basically winning, uh, they're winning two of their lanes. Bottom lane Doom is doing actually quite well at 27 CS, although he might get ganked right here. There's no Chronosphere. So they're gonna need some they're gonna need some lucky procs in that bash, and that's what Ogre is waiting for. Oh, got one. Ah, the fire blast is wound up. Now he's gonna go ahead and follow through with it. Throws out the bloodlust onto the void as well, but in July, not feeling scared one bit, has Doom and had Scorched Earth at the ready. There's gonna be an invis rune that spawns at six minutes. However, up at top, more action as we're gonna see the witch doctor die. XBG, they spotted that he had gone bottom to try to gank, so they take advantage. 
And LGD gets a kill on the board for themselves up there once again. Four to three now. And in mid, Yell trying to counter ward and such. Speaking of the mid matchup, the Viper is winning, like you said, 30 to 21 of Yell. But Yell's still holding his own, doing quite well, I think. Oh, Viper might be in trouble here. This this Doom's coming in with the ulti oh. and the coil. He's pretty tanky, though, and it doesn't disable passive, so. Oh, there's going to be the TPN, and in July, is very low. Here comes Black Z, doesn't have Chrono, will decide to pursue him out. Looks like Viper should stay alive. There's a casket that manages to get one good bounce, and now coming back, they're going to get in July, and Faith needs to get out of there. Very dangerous for him to be playing that far forward. Yao's coming back up as well, but another successful gank, and DK, DK continues to add to their tally. Seven minutes in, very active game as we had, we had thought it would be in the draft. I think those were some angry pings coming up from CTY. He's like, dude, heal me. Wish Doctor, heal me. And he just never <laughs> did during the do. He was just tunnel vision on his kill, and that was the only thing that was important. Oh, MMY to. in trouble at top. And looks like he and Siler were trying to get cute. There's going to be the magic stick charges used by Siler. It's actually his wand. The sentry did go down. He's going to come back out. He's going to be really careful here. And now there's going to be the stun from Faith as they're going to follow up. Get the kill on the XBG for sure. He does need a fire blast in the meantime. Dreamy U has to run. Doesn't have leap. Good casket, though. Wow. And Siler's very low. Time lapse is back. But a lot of vision uh, for DK. So he has to be very careful in that territory. Again, though, DK losing the Ogre Magi but still leading 6-4. to four. So the action continues, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if we see Black Z get active sometime soon. He's got Chronosphere back up again, and he's likely to come in and try to make something happen in one of these lanes soon. I think is I think he should be reacting to ganks like we saw in mid, rather than yeah. trying to instigate him, unless someone comes to his lane. He wants to just farm. He's free farming. I don't think that DK should really disrupt his farm uh, in that regard. So if they want to come have him be active, come to his lane, gank for him in his lane or he can just react and have a TP ready. He doesn't have a TP just yet, but I imagine he'll get one right here. Want to take a look at what in July is going to end up building as his first big item. What do you think? Blink? I really would... I, to me, a Blink would be essential in terms of getting on top of this Void, getting on top of the Viper, and so on. Um, I feel like he bought something just now. Um, did he? Did he buy... I feel like he has should have more gold than this. Maybe he did... I mean, he did real mid and didn't get a kill, so... Um, Blink is obviously good. I think Midas is okay this game. I think they need to farm more. Like, I I think they will be fine in the late stages of the game. I don't think Viper will do too much uh, with the Doom on him. And if they can just dodge the Chrono, and not even dodge, but just have Faith sit out with the swap, oh, man, they'll be fine late game. They just need to get there. And I think Midas would be a good um, way to do that. He's got 900 gold one way or the other. And Black Sea's kind of hiding out right now. We can see the smoke off of the rotation from MMY and Faith. And one would imagine they're looking through the jungle trying to find him since they're, they're not seeing him in lane. He's still just hanging out over to the side, staying Dyer's pretty close to XP range, attack. if not within it. This leaves top lane completely unoccupied as Weaver's gone into the jungle to farm just to try to stay safe. And we'll see how he wants to do this. They could try to send someone down here, or they could just end up trying to trade as DK's pecking away at the tier 1 top Dyer's as we speak. Are fortified. I, I don't think DK should leave until they get this tower. Dyer's this is really tower. good by them. And this is what I talked about. I think the persistence of being able to stay up here, make sure that Silar doesn't feel attack. comfortable in his own lane, and and push that tower. Even if they want to trade, which hopefully, they, for their sake, they can go in here. Chrono, There's... got two. MMY in July. Caught near their own tower. The reactions are going to be there. There's going to be a Viper Strike that goes out onto Black, or onto In July, rather. And they're going to end up getting him at the very least. Looks like MMY able to slide away. But that top tower remains standing. However, they're in a great position to push down here after already bringing the top tier one down to about one third of its health. This tower has been relatively untouched. And it looks like LGD has to scramble. I'm really impressed with the way that DK is managing this early game. It just feels like their decisions are very deliberate, very crisp, and very well executed. I agree. I think they're playing a lot better this game than other series we've seen. And that's not to say they played badly. I think they were playing decent opponents, actually. But uh, they've really stepped up their game and making smart decisions. Like, when when to go in. Um, they, they, they could have been greedy and just waited to get this extra tower up top and then go, but... They found their opening and they wanted to execute it properly and quickly, and they did so. So yeah, they, they're definitely playing quite well. Also, an interesting Doom choice right there. I think he knew, he should have known he was dead and he wasn't getting any kills, so... Yep. Doesn't have that to work with for the 40. They will be able to push DK back, at least for the moment, in MMY in July. Securing the Tier 1 for a little while, unfortunately. Oh, is that, oh, that puts it just into deny range. So they're actually going to be able to deny it if they really want to. 
Looks like for the moment, they'd rather keep it standing at top. We got XBG grabbing some XP. Very badly needed. He's now up to level six and a half. Couldn't make a very nice dive target. And CTY back to farming in mid. Has his headdress and should have the mech up very soon. Yeah, you can actually buy it if he wants to, I believe. Yeah. Um, maybe he's wanting... I don't know. I guess, I guess if you buy the headdress, there's no reason to just have it casual. It's not exactly a good standalone item. <laughs> right. So I imagine he'll purchase that pretty soon. Everything calming down, at least for the moment. Winners in CS being the Viper and the Marana. The Marana, though, certainly a big deal for her to win and to be uh, atop the board in terms of CS. She has one more, make it two more now, Dyer's than a solo one-on-one -on -one Doom, which is pretty damn impressive given she was in an aggressive trial lane against a Weaver. And like you said, her carry potential could be showing itself much sooner rather than later. So far as I'm build, what are you thinking for her? Go something like a Yasha or a, and straight up to a Manta or maybe do something a little different? Um, I mean, you could do the standard, like, drums, uh, Mjolnir build. It's actually quite good. Um, putting yourself... Oh, actually, action onto... He uh, just gets blown up <laughs> in the corner dead. of my eye. Sorry. As Cold Snuck is taken out right there. But, uh, yeah, to answer your question, I think, I think in general, tanking up early on is the best way. Because she's too much... She's too important to her lineup to get killed early on. She needs to... She needs to like get stunned, dodge something, and then leap out and get them to waste spells and still be able to fight. So right. at least get herself up some some HP items, whether it's a just a drums or even a manta after that. But I, I think tanking up at least early, worrying about the damage later. Yeah, I honestly against this team. I mean, like against the team she's up against, I wouldn't mind a BKB at all. Uh, coming out uh, sooner rather than later on her and for that exact reason, you know She just becomes a nuisance and then she can certainly build a Mjolnir and so on afterwards if she wants to to really focus on damage Manta Yasha What have you even going something like Yasha BKB and uh, that kind of a hybrid build that we used to see Six to eight months ago a bit more. There's the minus on the doom by the way not the best timed on it um, Coming out at 13 minutes in but that's okay because CTY is a greedy greedy mid who built the minus as well instead of finishing his mechanism yeah, I was I was gonna actually ponder that is there'd be no reason to save the gold that he had, so I was thinking, eh, maybe it's a Midas, because if he has, if he wants treads, he'd finish those. If he wanted to go Ags, he would have a point booster, so Midas it is. I think that's I think that's a fine decision. They they also aren't too scared. That that actually tells uh that tells me that DK actually aren't that scared going into the late game. That he's like, I want to be relevant because Vipers start to fall off. You know, we talk about Potoms. People think that Potoms can fall off, and she can if you don't keep accelerating your farm. But Vipers can definitely fall off. But this is uh, CTY saying, I don't want to fall off. We could go into a stalemate here in the mid game where nothing happens. And I don't want to be a useless hero come 50 minutes. <laughs> right, right. Understandably so. I want to see where LGD is going with this, with this pace of the game right now. Um, the Midas pick up on the Doom. Given the fact that the early game did not go as well for them as they certainly would have liked. I mean, the Weaver is near the top in terms of CS, so it's not as if he's languishing or anything. But, you know, <laughs> there were too many deaths, and Weaver notoriously takes a long time to come online. And they're so reliant on him for just right-click physical damage for the most part, especially with the Doom going straight up for the Midas and it coming out as late as it did. So they're going to have to try to start carving this map up, or DK is just going to do this all the way to the throne. They're just going to set up shop and just run. And now they're going to have in July just flat out getting caught. There's a Moonlight Shadow that's used immediately. Teleports are in from LGD. And DK wants to try and find themselves a target. There's going to be a Chrono. Got Siler and in July. Beautifully played with the Witch Doctor ulti cleaning up the Weaver. They're not going to overcommit on in July. Hell, they don't have to. They catch him from distance. That's two down, and LGD is being routed right now. Trying to defend this tier two, their movement not nearly as crisp as DK's, and it really just feels like DK is just, they're operating on a bit of a different level, which is surprising to say given how young most of this team is compared to the experience and the star power on LGD. But LGD's just been wandering into terrible fights for about the last 10 minutes. Yeah, I'm, I'm usually, I don't want to say it negative, caster but i i often will point out think like mistakes because i think that's the best way to learn right so i'm often like oh he shouldn't have been there he shouldn't have done that but this is one of the few times where i feel like i agree with you i think dk is just playing very well like i'm watching their movements where um like they got kind of antsy right there they got a multicast on the doom to start things off and they could have like some teams could have gotten hasty and been like oh let's kill him we got a multicast but they smartly backed off then re-engaged with a very nice split decision from 
from the Void of Chronosphere then. Um, he could have got greedy and got the auto attacks off to finish the kill on Siler, but he knew that uh, he was going to die anyway, so he just put himself into a better position. All right. these small little minute things are adding up, and it's making him look really impressive, this game. No doubt. I mean, we're at 16 minutes in, and we can see... So far, with a couple of tower kills and just overall efficiency advantage, they're up to about 5,000 gold. And they're going to be they're going to be very tough to deal with for a long time, especially now that CTY has finished his mech. Uh, we saw the Mask of Madness come out on the Void not long ago, and he's already picked up a Mithril Hammer, and they're able to chase the puck away. This is going to be another free tower in mid. And just like that, LGD only has two outer tier towers standing at 17 minutes. Uh, when they've only taken down two on the side of DK. Finally, right now, it looks like they're ready to get this tier one down at top. Uh, they're not going to do it without a fight, though, as the TPs are coming in. That's going to be Viper, Viper, Strike on a Faith. In the meantime, we see Siler loop around behind the tower. Faith's going to end up dead, and the tower's still standing. And Weaver has to teleport out as well. So once again, a completely unfavorable trade. And, you know, calm is the word that comes to mind. Like, DK didn't even rush that reaction. They went mid. They uh, took the tower. It's like, all right, we're going to go now, and we're going to get a kill and keep the tower up. Marana is opting for damage, actually, as she hmm. has built a Maelstrom. But I don't know. Like, right now, I don't know they need a whole lot more, and LGD could be walking into another bad fight here. Yep. Uh, oh. Interesting. If they, if they expend everything, that's the second wow. time they got the jump on the Doom, actually. Chronosphere's up. He's been Doomed, though. And Black Z has to stay near the Witch Doctor. He's going to turn and end up dying to end July. In July... Trying to make a run back to his own tier two. Has help back there in the form of the Venge. And he's going to be caught with a multicast. Good swap, though. Keep him alive. In the meantime, Cold Snap caught right in front of the tower. And Puck comes in to clean up. Now, LGD showing that form that we all expect to see from them this time around. Managing that engagement very well. It was a crazy slow reaction out of XBG when they wandered on top of him in the woods. So, must have uh, been preoccupied with other things. That time, though, I feel like they are they did exactly what they really wanted to do and needed to accomplish in terms of dooming the void and keeping DK from really setting their heels and doing as well in that fight as they could have. Yeah, absolutely. Like getting getting the doom onto void is very very important in these fights. And I'm I'm imagine if he gets a blink. Oh, actually, he's not going to go for a blink early on, as he's got this casual ogre club. So perhaps he thinks BKB is better. Kind of interesting against Viper and Void, but. Uh, the other stuns are also a big nuisance to him, so maybe that's why he wants to get it. But yeah, prioritizing these Doom targets has definitely shifted the fight. And as a result, their net worth is actually... Actually, Weaver's on top, identical, really, with the, with the Void. So Scyther is caught up quite nicely, although I, I do have to say that, actually, as he puts some aggression onto Dreamy U, he's trying to push this. He has a time lag, so he can play a little bit more aggressive if he wants, but yeah. Uh, I, I do think that farm the same amount of farm onto like Potom is a little bit better than the same amount of farm onto a Weaver. I think it takes mm -hmm. a Weaver a lot longer to actually get online. Yeah. Well, especially the way he seems to be building. He's got his Perseverance up, so it's going to be a Lincoln's first. And, you know, it might even be worthwhile for him to go BKB after Lincoln's, but that would delay him so long. And it's such a tough call to make, as you mentioned, against a Void and a Viper. Mm -hmm. It feels like you're not really getting your money's worth a lot of the times in terms of what still, you know, can hamper you. But those single target stuns that they have to land on him to keep him from time lapsing, if he can take those out of the equation, he can guarantee at least a, for a first uh, usage, 10 seconds of giving the damage he needs to give in these fights. Down at bottom, looks like they're just going to try to trade for this tier two in mid. Uh, no glyph on the side of DK. LGD still uh, actually did just use theirs. And it looks like DK playing a little bit more cautiously this time. They will go ahead and send one down. It's going to be the Void. They're going to try to Chrono Siler. And more TPs coming in. There's going to be a Mystic Flare. Doesn't matter. Survives through it. And MMY has to, hella, has to head elsewhere. So very nice kill onto uh, the Weaver that time. And he didn't spend his gold either. So he lost full gold amount. That was kind of awkward. Like, they knew that the Void was TPing in. They were trying to bait out the Weaver, but unless they got the silence onto the Void right away, there, there was no way they were going to actually come out on top there. And I know that it says it is ult up now, but I think it might have been barely on cooldown, like maybe a couple more seconds. But nonetheless, really fast reactions yet again from the Void. And this is going to be his Maelstrom. So nicely timed, pretty pretty good timing, actually, with the, with the Mask of Madness. 20 minutes, not bad. And... Uh, once again, it's actually, um, yeah, DK on top. LGD just trying to reset now. And DK doesn't want to give them time as they're going to smoke four. Shadow. Heading through mid and follow it with the Moonlight Shadow. They do have their fifth. That's the Void split off to bottom. Just trying to make some space for him and try to find themselves a priority target. In July seems to be the man. They are keeping faith. 
Arrow shot will miss. And CTY right on top of it. Looks like they want to go. There's the Viper Strike. Doom did go up, but the Viper Strike went off first. Faye's going to come in, but he's coming into a much worse situation. Here comes the rest of LGD, though. There's going to be a multi-man coil. And now the ulti from the Witch Doctor, though, just teeing off. He will be tossed in the air, but still the damage is done. It's a three for one so far in MMY. Not out of the woods yet. In fact, caught from behind by XBG. Got himself a multicast on the Bloodlust as well. He'll be able to chase him down and give him the big old club in the back. There it is. Four for one. And the Void the whole time, pushing down bottom, taking his farm, and now pressuring this tier two. And I just feel like DK the, is playing You can kill the Weaver. So well. You can kill the Weaver right now if he wants to. Yep. And he's gonna. <laughs> There's the Chrono. <laughs> Siler. Oh, he needs a, a little bit more crit action. No. He actually didn't proc very anything, man. He proc like yeah. once at the very end. That's really unfortunate. And that Weaver's gonna be careful. There's Faith now to follow it up. So in the right place at the right time. And let's see if Black Z's time walk will get him to safety. He has to beat the uh, the grub off of him. Siler's playing with fire here. If he had backtracked that and then come out, I guess Faith was there. Never mind. So 15 to 9. They do get a kill on the Void, which is certainly handy. But DK continues to add to their lead. It has been a steady, more or less upward slope. They had one little dip, but for the most part, DK has just been setting the tone. That, that kill's actually really big, though, because that just bought Silar's uh, Lincolns, mm -hmm. uh, and Void was actually getting a ton of farm before that. That's really unfortunate, man. He got some really unlucky procs, or I should say lack of procs. I think he got one Maelstrom proc right at the end, but there was really nothing else after that. Very unfortunate. I thought it was a free kill as well, as, as he, he thought that it too. So mm -hmm. kind of unfortunate. It's actually a pretty big deal. So Lincoln's here coming out, 22, 23 minutes. Pretty bad timing in the, in the grand scheme of things, but could have been worse. What do you think for him next? Um, does he go ultra defensive, or does he decide mm -hmm. to go something like a pure out-and-out out, out, and out desolator? I would say BKB's not bad, because you, I think they still have good damage on their team between Puck and Skywrath. Um, but they also have the failsafe and the swap from Venge, so that kind of limits you, or that kind of frees you up, I should say for going more of a, a damage-oriented build like a Desso, which I think Desso would actually be pretty good. As long as Faith is on top of his swaps, and this is one of his best heroes, it really is. Oh, I would say sure. this and Ancient Apparition are just fantastic. Um, then it, it, you can you can't afford to go a little bit more greedy. So I would say he probably goes Desso, but it wouldn't surprise me going BKB either way. Yules was picked up by Yao. That's what we saw take the Witch Doctor out of his ulti that was really well placed. Um, in that last engagement at top. Another smoke out of DK. And speaking of items, CTY has picked up either a casual vid boost or he's going heart. He just bought something and that, yeah, he just finished his whole heart. So he is monstrously big. Oh and my tough God. To bring down. <laughs> that is ridiculous. He's sitting at 2,500 HP, give or take, at 24 minutes in. That is going to be an, an impossible raid boss of a Viper to have to cope with. Black Z waiting for a chance to chrono. They know Yao would make an appetizing target as well. Looks like they're going to slow siege it and try to bait a little bit of aggression out. They should get this for free unless they decide to go sometime soon. In July, does have a scepter now, by the way. Very important distinction to make in terms of his ultimate and how long he's going to be able to shut down one of these heroes. At bottom, in the meantime, Black Z did try to Chrono Siler again, and he's now he's going to get the bash after the time lapse. But with him leaving, that tier two in mid remains standing. And, yeah, he's just going to chase him down a little bit, but Siler happy to peck away at him. You can see he's doing decent damage, even without a damage item built. So Black Z, once again, goes uh, goes on the bug hunt and comes up uh, without a whole lot to show for it. Now a counter smoke out of LGD. I think he suspects this as he's backing up mid-creep wave farm, so, yeah, he knows this is coming. Did you see the, the beginning of that chrono? Like, did he get unlucky again, or... I mean, obviously... I he... got there I got there with just about a second or so left in it. I was watching him because I thought we were going to see them come out. But, um, yeah, I would imagine. I don't know. With the Lincolns, Siler's pretty tanky now. And this is actually a big get for LGD if they can take this Roshan uh, without it being contested. And I don't know the DK can without Chronosphere. Yeah, also, Siler showing bottom is a really good move. If he had not shown up, then they knew they were smoking for bottom. And if they don't show up anyone on the map, then they would probably suspect they go for Roshan. But that little bit of... Sh him showing himself bottom is actually a, a pretty nice move. As a result, it's a very easy, uncontested Roshan for LGD. Yep, and Siler's timing was great. As you said, he showed as long as he could. Then he Sakuchi to clean up the last of a creep wave and then just beeline straight for the Roche pit and manages to find himself in Aegis. So, LGD, after struggling and really just seeming out of sorts uh, for the first 25 minutes, gets themselves a nice little turn of events. They've kept their Weaver alive. That kill on Void really 
just to build on what you said, is turning is turning out to be a very important moment in this game. And since then, DK has been sputtering a bit. And now they've cut those leads and golden experience down to about half. So LGD with that uh, with that Aegis and now 2,200 gold on Siler as well. I feel like they're actually in really nice position. They are. I, I do favor them in the late stages of the game. And especially once you get more items on the Doom, like... Dooming someone at in the late stages of the game is so effective. It's similar to like a Batrider lasso, just getting them completely eliminated from the fight right from the get-go. Um, if you can get a blink too, I think that's obviously his next item in, in store. He really needs that blink. Axe is quite good. I, I thought initially it was going to be a BKB. I thought that was weird, but Axe makes a lot more sense now that I think about it. Um, so that's good for him. But yeah, he'll definitely need that blink. CTY continues to add to his copious collection of items or he's about to anyway another 2000 gold for him and he's nearly 5000 gold ahead of the weaver right now uh not quite that high actually he's about 4k give or take but still i mean you're talking roughly the the distance of a scepter um in terms of overall net worth that he's built for himself right now and it's not hard to see why he farms like hell and he's been he's gone six one and four so far early in the game so been a part of 10 of the 15 kills that dk has tallied puck has actually had a deceptively effective Radiance game as well yao going attack. five one and one early on and very high in the net worth chart as well top tower yeah he had started. one questionable oh i see mmy trying to do something but he'll be okay yeah, there was one questionable yules where he actually yules the uh, witch doctor he tried to cancel his ultimate it was just bad timing though because uh there's a mystic player right on top of it so, but other than that, yeah, he's been doing a lot. Puck, if you actually always look at the post-game uh, damage done, Puck is one of those heroes that you don't think about it, but actually always comes out on top as the most right. damage done, just because all of his spells are AoE and, and heavy nuke. So, right. um, yeah, I'm sure he's doing a lot of damage in these fights. DK beginning to march around once again. Siler is pressuring the top tier 2. XBG unable to find his target after the... Uh, after spotting him out, they're going to get this tier 2 uncontested. It looks like DK's happy to just go ahead and trade this. However, they're going to be getting there a little bit late. It is super low, though, so they should get it um, before LGD can really try to respond. Black Z's going to catch two with the Chrono Gun. MMY right at the edge of it. Beautiful positioning from him, by the way. Arrow, little late, doesn't matter. Made up for that. Missed RNG against the Weaver right there. Got him when he needed him, and that's two down as well as a tower. And suddenly, Puck might be in a position where he has to buy back lest they lose at least a Tier 3, if not more. Now, keep in mind, Weaver does still have his Aegis, has it for two more minutes, and now has added that Desolator. So going out and out, right click, following the Lincoln Sphere. Let's see how they want to defend this. In July, gets caught with a multicast Fire Blast. Now, we're going to have CTY in a little bit of trouble. Is able to mech through, but beautifully placed Coil. And the follow-up now from LGD, running DK out of the base. As XPG now wants to turn it around, though, Yules onto the Witch Doctor once again to cancel his ulti. They're going to be able to finish Cold Snap off easily, though. And the greed of DK biting them in the tail. XPG will be able to TP away. However, Puck did have to buy back, and the Venge did too. So it wasn't as if they defended that without cost. Still, nice turnaround. Would have been better if they could have gotten the Void, but the fact that they got CTY nice in and of itself. And they didn't just get CTY, they blew him the <laughs> F up. Like, if, sure. even though he had the heart and the mech and the healing from Witch Doctor, he has very little armor, only 15. And when you have a Deso on top of the Wave of Terror, it's actually only level 3, too. So he has actually one more point he can put into it for another additional negative armor. You get a little bit of negative armor from negative armor from the, uh, the Swarm as well. Mm -hmm. So they just blew him up. They don't care how much HP he has. As long as they have this negative armor and good auto attack damage, he is just just toast, man. He can't do anything. I'm really happy with uh, the decision of LGD to buy back on the Venge there as well. They could have tried to buy back on just the puck and scare them away, but because they made sure they had all five up and running. Hang on, Siler playing with fire here. It's going to be have his Lincolns popped, and he hung way long, barely missed by an arrow, but he does get caught from behind, and oh, Black Z! Went for the Chronosphere, but Siler's going to end up dead nonetheless. Maybe Earn Charge got him. Aegis, though, had to have had no more than 30 seconds left on it, if even that. So all they get is an Aegis that was all but expired. It cost them a Chronosphere, and they're not going to be happy with that exchange either. And as good as and crisp as they looked, DK now falling prey to a little impetuousness and beginning to give away a bit of that momentum. LGD has cut this game almost down to dead even in terms of gold, and they've actually taken for the first time this game then experience lead. So LGD 
really looking good as we get across the 30 minute threshold now looking ahead to the next 30 minutes trout how do you like the way these two compositions stack up in the late and ultra late game ultra late game it's it's all it it almost never comes down to draft it's like it's just who gets the better jump and things like that if you can get a three-man yeah. chronosphere but i would just say standard late game lgd has a better game or a better team like doom is so good late game on any on any lineup he has the blink now finally um, and also, I just I feel like I haven't felt this Marana's presence at all outside of the laning phase. Like, laning phase, it was good. It was a nice try lane with a good stun setup with the arrow. Um, but outside of laning phase, I feel like her farm is just terrible. And she got weird items. Like I talked about, like, she has a Mjolnir, and that's all fine and dandy. But she has sub-1,000 HP. She dies mm -hmm. to, like, uh, two magic missiles and a magic bolt or something. It's just... I, I think she's paper, and I think she needs to be... And, and as a result, she has to play very scared in fights, and she's basically an arrow. Nothing more. The LGD does have the feel of having the entire map really under their control. They're the ones that are doing a good job of choking out the jungle. We see DK having to group up a lot more near mid and their own offlane. And I, I like where LGD's put themselves. They got a couple of big wins when they needed them. And some big items on the way sometime soon as well. In fact, NNY is going to have a four staff very, very soon. Um, Yao, he's actually, yeah, he's going Hex. He's picked up an ultimate orb. Wonderful pickup for them. Yet another single target disable if they need it. The Void has fallen off a little bit. He's now middle of the pack in terms of farm. The Puck's actually more farm than he is. And that great start that the Marana had. Oh, there's going to be a two-man coil. And Dreamy U tried to leap out but didn't get away. Here comes Black Z. Gets off the Coronasphere. And they're doing good damage to Faith, But it's just Faith who swapped out the primary target. They end up getting the Vengeful Spirit and nothing else. Let's see if they can follow it up. There's Bloodlust onto a creep. As XBG had to have misclicked. Dreamy U very low. Has to turn back around. Got the multicast. And... In July, barely able to survive. XBG under Moonlight Shadow wanted to club him once. Now going to follow it up. Got another multicast onto the Skywrath Mage, making it a two-for-one exchange. They lose their Marana and only get two supports out of it, but still could have gone much worse. However, it did cost them another Chronosphere from Black Z. It actually still worked out quite nicely. It was a very nice swap there from, uh, from the Venge. I think that... The Ooh, July the should have just, or it was in July, should have just ran away, cut his losses, accept the sacrifice that Faith uh, gave, and be on his merry way. Also, that the innate problem that, of Potom, which I just talked about, having such low HP, was shown in that fight right there. Like, she gets nuked once or twice, and she can't really sustain in fights. She got hit by something, and then she still pursued. Puck ran in, orbed her once, and she died. Her, her HP is just way too low right now. And she shouldn't be Mjolnirring herself. She should probably put it on, like, Viper or something. Right. Well, DK, nonetheless, able to reclaim a little bit of territory in their own jungle. And I feel like this Hex is actually going to be huge for Yao. Um, his ability to not just initiate, get into the fights and so on, especially with the Blink Dagger now up on the Doom. They just have so many ways to cope with, with CTY in particular, as tanky as he is, even though he's not feeling as immortal as uh, one would have thought there's that hex done as we speak by the way but he's picked up a yasha so he's going to continue to remain a big threat but with the ability to just account for the doom in so many different ways and hell we haven't even really talked about the power of ancient seal from mmy when all else fails if he can just get a, a very quick seal onto uh the void it takes it takes him out of uh, his effectiveness as well and they're going to have that put to the test right now as dk is ready to run at the tier three this bottom one they had whittled down to about a quarter of its health is under assault once again. There's that Mjolnir buff, as you had said. There's going to be the swap. They got CTY. They're going to try to follow it up. Here comes the Chrono. He actually got three with it. And a beautiful ulti from the Witch Doctor going the town on in July. However, the Hex from the Puck saved him. In July, able to make it away, being pursued out by Dreamy U. Behind that, though, the damage is still immense as DK forces a buyback. Uh, takes a buyback out of their own Viper, but does take down three from LGD. Buyback status on the Doom is nil no no never mind is nil now because he just popped back the venge doesn't have buyback and the weaver does not either so they're going to end up losing rax here and that makes that a very odd buyback from doom actually if he buys back with no support from the weaver i don't know what his effectiveness is going to be black z in the meantime finishes a bkb and we'll see dk yeah i think they're realizing right now the weaver hasn't bought back yet but the doom has that means he's likely not coming back up and they're not going to fear a doom who's already expended his ultimate yeah. and already died after doing so and they're a team that can i think that they can fight without their big ultimates too like especially with weaver down they, i don't think they have to be scared of anything 
One set of racks down, soon to be two. Going to work now on this melee racks. Yeah, I think this is going to be ball game just about because they can't do anything. The Doom bought back. I don't know if it's a miscommunication or what, but with him buying back and the Weaver not, uh, DK looked like they were ready to back out, then reverse course when it just dawned on them. It's like if they buy back on one and, and Weaver still hasn't come back when we're already taking the racks, he probably can't. And such is the case as they managed to clear out both mid and bottom racks, both sets, and hell, they're not done. Ooh, the they're old fake back and smoke. I love this. I love this so much. They could break the back of LGD right here. Black Z even has a chrono. Oh, if they get Yao and Faith, they're going to get Faith. And he's down for sure. Ultimate is down as well. And Angelai is going to expend the ultimate of his own. Doom onto the Viper. It doesn't matter. They follow it up. He has no buyback remaining. And Hex on the Black Z. Not good enough. A little too late. Siler can do nothing but skirt around and do what damage he can. But that's two more down. And DK is going to be happy to reset and potentially run at the racks in top lane. Yeah, I actually think Ogre is going to get banned out. I really do. This, these multicasts are actually doing so <laughs> much work in these fights, man. Oh, man. They're doing so much damage. Uh, Doom is down for, yeah, down for the count. He cannot come back. No money or even time for that. I think he just used it. Weaver just not could do good damage with, with the rest of his team. And without the rest of his team to support him, he doesn't seem all that impressive. Nope. Tier 3 gone. Siler's still doing what damage he can. Viper Strike's going to pop the Lincolns of the Weaver. But it's not going to matter. This is going to be Mega Creeps, or very close to it. There's going to be a swap of faith. They managed to bring down Black Z. Certainly a win there, but look at the multicast once again. XBG, man, book a ticket to Vegas. Whether or not you go for D2L finals or not, that's where you belong, son. <laughs> As he has been racking up the cha-ching moments to the tune of a DK victory right here in Game 1. I'll tell you what, man, DK looked good. Like, not kind of good, not sort of good, not they had a good game. They looked as crisp as I've seen a team look in the East. Yeah, I, it was a bit scary there in the mid game. A couple of little unfortunate things there. Black said, I, I feel I'm really happy that it had a nice finish there with that nice Chronosphere onto two after they initiated onto the Viper because he got really unlucky, I think, several times in this game. I had one whiff Chrono, it happens to the best of us, but. I think overall, he still played fantastically this game. Um, also, just a big blunder by Sylar finishing the heart instead of holding buyback. I think if he had buyback in that last fight there, completely different. But he yeah. got greedy and bought the bought the heart. And uh, I think he was just banking on the fact that I will always have, um, have Faith behind me with the swap. But I believe, could be wrong, but I believe Faith actually started the fight by swapping CTY in. And so he they, did. Yeah, so they didn't actually have that available. Maybe that was a miscommunication thing, as you mentioned, uh, between Faith and Sylar. But either way, I still think the safer change, uh, choice is to save your buyback, especially when you're fighting in your base. If you're pushing, I think buying all out is fine because it's the distance of them to fight you and then come all the way to your base is obviously much longer than you just buying back and being immediately into a fight in your own base. So I think he definitely is safe for buyback. Uh, but nonetheless, very well played by DK. Much more impressive than we've seen before. I couldn't agree with you more. CTY stacking cash like it's his job or something. 588 GPM, highest on the board to close things out. Even higher than the Weaver. 8-3 and three for him as well, so very effective play across the board. Dreamy U fell off a little bit after an effective early game, but still was able to contribute all that they needed from him. The Faceless Void, played by Black Z, finished up at 7-3. and 6-1 and one on XBG, though, is really the standout here on that insane Ogre Magi. Got the luck when he wanted it, got it when he needed it. And DK, on top of that, and a few other things, rides it to a Game 1 victory. We now look ahead to game number two. This is our leadoff best of three of the night. We have a second one coming up following the conclusion of this one. That'll be Tongfu taking on LV Gaming. So make sure you stick around through this series and on towards that one. In fact, while we have a few minutes right now and while we have a few minutes inevitably between series looking ahead, make sure you head to kingston.com uh, slash D2LS5. Amazing deal going on on their cloud headset right now. It's the headset that Trout's wearing right now, the headset I use at home, the most comfortable headset I've ever worn in terms of just great headsets for computer gaming and everything else. Slash down 30%, so make sure you take a look at that. Down from $99.99 to $69.99, and you can choose to buy it on Amazon or Newegg. And you can find all the information as well as links to those items on those websites.